Hey, what's up everyone? This is Ryan Ochoa. I'm with one of my favorite people ever, Adi Shankar. We are on the Bootleg Universe podcast. Enjoy. So we met in November of 2012. Wow, you actually came with the date. <laughs> I, I remember very vividly meeting you because you were, uh, you know, I was 10 years ago. So you're 26 now. So you were 16. You were 16. Mm -hmm. uh, and you had more charisma as a 16-year-old than most full-grown, pretty much anyone else at this event. And we were at like, this wasn't just like a normal uh, event. This was like a charity event. Uh, Kellen, Kellen Lutz. Mm -hmm. Was it, was it, did Kellen throw, he threw the event, but was it his charity? It, no, Saving Innocence is not, it was not his charity, but his, his best friend slash manager, Ryan Daly. Yes. Who you are friends with as yes. well. And he used he, to manage you. Yes, he used yeah. to, yeah. but we're still cool. We actually, we, we still talk, Yeah, you know, well, he was actually my agent first mm. and then I went with him as a manager. Um, but, uh, he, his, his, Ryan's best friend was, the, it, it's her organization. And so uh, Kellen was like the spokesperson the year that right. we met. So he was the one yeah. that did all the promos. And it was all, you know, it was all all, all actors in the room. I, I, I in, in a way I felt uh, as someone who wasn't an actor, or at least I wasn't an actor then. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I was the youngest one there for yeah. sure. Uh I felt a little like, whoa, uh, <laughs> this is cool. And you, 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 I mean, you literally stood out in that crowd to me. Well, thank in that you. Moment. I was like, this, this guy is going to make it. I don't know what it is, but he's going <laughs> to do something. Cause this dude has like way too much attitude, way too much confidence. And it's just way too charismatic for things to not manifest. I hope that's a good thing. But, uh, I mean, everywhere I go, no matter where it is, and it, it's a, it's a, you, you kind of said it earlier, like a personality or a, it's it's something that I I actually take a lot of pride in as well. But no matter where, wherever I am, whether I'm at the grocery store, at you know a theme park, at an event, on set, doesn't matter. I always want to be the same person. I always want to be present, and uh, ultimately, you know, just actually have like a. And uh, a positive energy that people want to be around. You know what I mean? Because but you're not acting. That's the interesting thing. Because at, at my my initial reaction, like I think ten seconds into you opening your mouth, right? Because you were <laughs> you were kind of like the closest comp would be Shia LaBeouf's character in Constantine. I don't, I don't know if you you've seen Constantine or if you get the reference. You're just kind of like this fast talking like. 16 year old who that was like, like me. navigating with adults <laughs> and you were like, Yo, you know, you know, it, it was, it, it was, it was very interesting. You weren't acting. This was, this is like actually who you are. Yeah. And the other thing that I've, I've noticed, uh, among child stars, that's, that, that's how I looked at you. Oh, right? it, I mean, it, you were a child star. Yeah. I, I fall into that category. <laughs> you are a child star. I mean, yeah, you, you were, on Disney and Nickelodeon, and then yeah. you acted in like movies with other child stars. You were True. you were in the child star True. circuit, yeah. right? I guess the cliche, or maybe the the I guess the publicized narrative is is like people leave that ecosystem fucked up, and and there's like a bitterness there. There's a there's a there's a there's an anger, yeah, uh, or there's like a a darkness at the very least. Absolutely. Yeah. Having, having known you, I mean, again, Grant, we don't hang out every day, but having known you through like now a 10 year period. Yeah. I kept waiting for that to happen. You were just, when is Ryan going to F when, up? When is Ryan going <laughs> to flip out? When are you, and you never flipped out. You just no. got more positive. Right. Yeah. And what was baffling to me. Is, and I, I actually, real quick, I actually, sometimes I feel like that bothers people. Yeah? Yes. How so? Um, and not necessarily like maybe 
like a specific person. I just feel like, you know, I'm very, very active on social media. Um, I see, you know, old people, like you said, old friends or old acquaintances, let's say, that I knew during the child, you know, my, those teen days. Yep. Um, and sometimes I feel like, not necessarily it's like intimidating, but I feel like people are like, why or, or, or how, how did, how did, how did you like overcome that? Hey, knock on wood. I mean, exactly. I mean, anything can happen. That's the truth. But at the end of the day, I, I, I feel like sometimes it's, some people are, are like, yeah, like why, like how, or why or how. And the truth is I just owe the credit to my family. I, I've surrounded myself, people like you as well, people that are are driven, people that are are positive, but especially um, my my immediate family. Just used that word recently. <laughs> um, my brothers, I mean, my best friends, and these guys. I mean, I I talk about them. Literally wearing you know a shirt with my brothers on it. Um, I I've I've surrounded not just like you know myself, but my brothers my family, but also these are my best friends. And the truth is, is they are so goal oriented that I have no choice but to, to move forward. And, and I, I don't, I don't want to get sidetracked because at the end of the day, like, um, you know, you talked about like, yeah, you know, leaving that ecosystem, you know, can mess you up or, you know, you could be like, wow. Cause the truth is, and this is just the reality of it. And I think I maybe, it hit me randomly one day, but at one point you're, you're on almost, you feel like you're untouchable. You know, you feel I've, like I've been around you when little kids were like <laughs> mobbing you, like, like in, public, I was in public, in public, yeah. uh, where, where, you know, it, it, it was basically like a mini Tom Cruise had walked in the door, <laughs> you know, uh, they were freaking out and then they were like, Oh my God, do you, do you, do you know him? And I was like, no, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't know him. <laughs> like walks out, you know what I mean? Because I, I I didn't want like little kids to start like pressuring me to introduce, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and even that didn't fuck you up. I I've seen grown men who <laughs> who go from being like uh uh you know dude on the street to household name, and the ego just takes over and starts driving the car. Yeah. That didn't happen with you either. Yeah, and. It's it's ultimately, I mean, <laughs> people are like, dude, Ryan, you bring his name up probably way too much. But The Rock. I, yeah. I look at Dwayne Johnson and and you um I just told my brothers this quote the other day because you know, the truth is is we we are we we go through real problems, we deal with real issues mm. and on the daily, no matter what. And the other day I told my brothers, I was like, I've been seeing this quote and it's so relevant and so significant to to so many people but yeah. especially me the quote is people with tough past build the best futures and the reason i bring that up is dwayne johnson his story is so famous now about seven bucks and, and you know what you came from. He, he, he's known what it's like to, to not have anything. So once that time comes and, and look, I, I'm not using him. I mean, using him as an example, but I'm also tying it to myself that these people that get this overnight success, sometimes majority of the time don't really know how to handle it. Did you have a tough background? Uh, I mean, it's, it it's hard to actually like openly talk about it, Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that my, my life is all rainbows and sunshines cause it's not, you know, I'm still living it because I mean, if I'm being openly honest right now on this interview, I, I still have so much that I want to accomplish. I'm nowhere near where I want to be or, or the, the goals, but it's it's this level of progress and this journey that has me being just ev- so grateful for the little victories. Mm-hmm. And every Wednesday, I do a live on TikTok. I have this thing called Ryanator Wednesday. 
And I talk about on my live, people are like, every Wednesday you go live on TikTok or is this all you do now? And I'm like, I only go live once a week. But the truth is, is you have to celebrate the small victories or the small wins. And that's what I'm doing. I, every week I just celebrate, hey, even if it's one little thing, I'm celebrating little victories along the way. Because then when the big victories come and the and the big success and hey, you, whatever that may look like, that you said, whatever that it is, um, because I don't even know, you know, I, 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 I have goals yeah. and I have things that like I want to accomplish. Like you walked in and said, wow, why aren't you Wolverine? Like maybe one day I will be, or maybe I won't. But when that day comes or if that day ever comes, I know I'll be ready, but I know I'll also appreciate it because I've appreciated the journey. I, you know this what I mean? This is so fascinating to me. Um, I hope that's not weird. No, no, it's not weird. It's Sometimes not weird I always feel like I'm weird it's, in a, it's in not, a way. It's not, it's not weird. Um, it's not weird at all. It's it's interesting to me in a good you, way. Is in a, it a in good a, in a, fascinating in a, in a in a beautiful way? Oh, because okay, good. you went from you know child star, multiple multiple projects and multiple networks. Right, mm-hmm. you're being offered movies again within the kid ecosystem. I literally right? went from Nickelodeon from the biggest show to this day. I mean, they did a revival mm-hmm. and d- doing another season because of it. The biggest show on Nickelodeon and right to a, a show that got picked up and that was on that was on for three and a half years yeah. of my life on Disney. Yes. And now labeled me as a Disney kid. Like that alone is you would think like how did he handle it as a 14 yeah, year yeah. old? And three and a half years for, for a normal TV show? That's long. Yeah. For a kid's TV show, when you're a kid, like 13 to 16, you're a different person. 12 to 15, you're a different those are those are seminal experiences, right? So, mm-hmm. so, so, so the world coalesced around you to create this. Uh, call it work rhythm. Let's just call it work rhythm, right? Yeah. You got the Nickelodeon show, then you got the Disney show, then you did mostly ghostly, right, right after, right, right after. Right right you're on mostly ghostly. It was like uh, it was you, Bella Thorne, uh, Calum, Calum, uh, and Madison. And Madison, and yeah. Michelle. And Michelle. I, <laughs> Ooh, I was in it too. Lot. I was in it too. I was and in Matthew. it too. I was in it too. <laughs> the photographer, I can't do this anymore. I showed up with a handlebar mustache for a for a Disney for a Disney movie, and they're like, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "No, I have this whole backstory." They're like, "The director was like, oh, come on, who who are you?" Um, that's about it. Anyways, <laughs> you're on. You're kind of on this freight train. Mm-hmm. So to speak, this work rather this work freight train, mm-hmm. and then then it kind of stopped, and it stopped for everyone going through this transition from child star to adult star, and it stops because you now have to start auditioning. You're auditioning for adult roles, right? You're you're auditioning for a new set of executives, a new set of networks, a new set yeah. of studios, right? A lot of people that never seen your face before, right? And they're like, and and and. They haven't seen your face, and they're judging you by the stigma. Mm-hmm. There, there is a there. There are these preconceived notions. Mm, probably got a drug problem, right? This twelve-year-old with a drug problem. Yeah, like <laughs> there, there are these uh, kind of anchors or uh, in, around the neck, not like anchors, like grounded anchors. Yeah, right. There was a, there was an article that I did when I was promoting my film, The Samuel Project. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like the first film, really out of like from transition, you know. And the, one of the, there was an article that said from iCarly to The Samuel Project. Right. And in the, one of the interviews that I did, that you know got pushed, was I talked about how a lot of casting directors and producers weren't they wouldn't even see me. And I'll still talk about it to this day because it's the truth and it's something that I live by. And it's something that, again, going back to our conversation about being grateful now that, hey, some some do, some don't still to this day. But I wouldn't even get seen in a room because I was a Disney kid. Mm-hmm. And no matter what, I've talked about it once, I'll, I'll always talk about it because it's, it's, it's actually sad, especially for, you know, I was for a long time and still I teach – younger actors as well. And a few that I know got in are on Disney right now. I don't want that to happen to them, you know? Yeah. It's and in, it happened it's, to it's, me. It's interesting. There, there is a bias against, uh, you, you see a lot of professional wrestlers express the same thing, right? Yes. Like, uh, the rock, bring this back to the rock, the rock transitioned. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Hulk Hogan at the time sort of transitioned. He had some 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 more mainstream opportunities, yeah. but for the most part, John Cena, is, John Cena, Batista. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's select. But, but for the mo- yeah, it's select. It's very. It's yeah. like you're either Selena Gomez or you're not. Yes. And it's 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 weird because you you have this almost this farm system because you could look at Nickelodeon and Disney as this farm system of young talent. And it's almost like they get excluded from the conversation. Yeah, and it's a weird, it's a weird bias, uh, bias that I would love to understand more at some point. Uh, do you, do you know why that is? Why it exists? I the only thing that I can think of is they have this, this, not stereotype, but they have maybe like it. They just like assume that the acting isn't real or it's like this, I mean, then kind of this, when you were, when you are auditioning for these shows, they always say, you got to be over the top. You got to be like that. You know what I mean? Which truthfully for me, none of both characters that I played on both networks, I did not have to over the, you know, I wasn't like an over the top actor. I actually got to play real characters. Mm -hmm. I felt like, and I got to act, but um, for the most part, I feel like it's this like, stereotype of yes. all the actors when you see the leads they're always exaggerated and, and wide-eyed and it's not really like guardians of justice type of you know performance there's no there's know? no chill in the performance exactly. but, but again but the, the material calls for that so it's not it, it's also weird that there's a value judgment in in that like over the top acting is somehow not as good and or easier to do than the uh than the grounded acting Yes. It's just a dial. You can yeah. amp it up or you can turn it down. You it's, can turn it down. And I, you fact, almost wish you could tell these. Yeah. In fact, casting. in fact, I would argue, uh, you know, having worked with, with performers from just kind of every school, uh, it's easier to take someone big and have them tone it down than, than having someone who's used to being subtle yeah, yeah. and I need more. I yeah. Need yeah. More. It's like, dude, bring more energy. And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello. And you're like, <laughs> okay. Um, so that's interesting. Now, th- this isn't something unique to you, right? I, I, as clearly a lot yeah. of performers in the in the Disney Nickelodeon feeder system They're go through this friend. exact, no, but they go through this exact uh, hurdle. Yeah. But what I found fascinating about you is it's not, you are exactly the same today in terms of like competence, uh, confidence. Yeah. And confidence, uh, as you were in, uh, as you were as a sixteen-year-old. Oh my gosh! Before I, I gotta say, yeah. Going off of what you're saying, I remember I was had a thought earlier that I was going to talk about the you saying like that I'm the exact same mindset-wise today. Yes, mindset-wise. I wish, and I think this is n- maybe not why I am who I am. I, but I, every day, and this is why you said about earlier, like people like are back on the, when they're back on the shows, the truth is, is I was part of a select few, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. if not everybody gets the opportunity that I got when I was a regular middle school and high school student. That's just, that is the truth, which is sure. why. If I could, and I'm not saying that I, you know, was somebody different back then because you said you met me, but looking at the person that I am today, I almost wish I could go back in time and not necessarily relive it, but just be even more grateful for it. Because now looking for like the person I am today, it's part of this new film that I just wrote. I talk about, and a big reason why I wrote the movie was because the character, which I won't give too much away about it, but the character was written because Ryan, who I am, I am so grateful for the time, the opportunities, the people, and everything that I met during my teen child star days, which is why if I was, like I just like always say, I always wish I could go back and just like thank one more person, talk to one more person and just say, thank you for bringing me here. But that's when I like, I feel like I'm not necessarily making up for it now. I'm just adding on to it. Sure. You know? Sure. 
because so many people are like, and you see the articles, I don't never call out anybody, but I almost feel like, wow, you were given such a huge opportunity back then. The people that are super famous, like you, no matter what, were put in that position. I know there's one random person in some random city or country that wishes that they had that, mm -hmm. you know? Oh yeah. And that's why I'm More like, one. you know what? Exactly. Yeah. That's why I am who I am. And that's why I, you know, I'll say, you know what? I will look at every Disney and Nickelodeon executive and say, thank you. I embrace that, right. you know, time. You guys gave me, a, you know, an amazing, you know, childhood. And I will, I will always be grateful and thankful for that time. I will never talk bad about it because the truth is I had so much fun. That's, and maybe that's why. I enjoyed every minute of it. I was on a show. I, I was on two great shows. That's the truth. Both shows, both casts. I literally just talked to Mitchell Musso an hour ago. We talked, we, we haven't seen each other in two years, but it was like no time has ever, you know, had passed. I embraced the friendships, the relationships. I, again, I could do a two hour interview just talking about how thankful I am for those. So when you say the, the, the articles, are you talking about the, the, the Dan, this Dan Schneider person? Is that what you're? The what? There's a, there's a guy, Dan Schneider, who's like kind he, of recently come under. Yeah, uh, he, I don't know very much about this. He was the creator of iCarly. He was okay. the one that hired me. Right. True. My my callback was with Dan Schneider. He mm. was the one that basically gave me my break into into my role as Nickelodeon. So no, we won't be talking about Dan Schneider. But yes, there is what I've seen, and I don't know too too much, but. I'm not oblivious to the right. situation, but when I am on live, people always say about, oh, what did what things with Dan Schneider? But truth is, I will I won't necessarily say I'm gonna, you know, um push it away, but I'll say, Dan hired me, gave me an opportunity. That was it for me. No, it also sounds like no just, bad experiences yeah, yeah. on my end with right. him. And I've talked to other people that had said the same thing. Um, but again. I don't speak for everybody, right. so and I don't have the right. facts. And it also sounds like um, the other the other kind of head of the of the of the online uh, thing that like the negativity maybe also uh, it seems like and I and again I don't know that many you know you're you're like. It's it's really just you, right? I don't I don't, I don't have like a from Rolodex that, from that of, world of, of, of like child stars <laughs> that I like hang out with. I'm not that guy. Like it's literally just you. Hey, um, that's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. Um, but it seems like what gets reported about is a lot of them were unhappy to be there. A lot of them, some of them, the the, the vocal ones, they didn't want to be in that position where they were like forced to work during their childhood, but you clearly did. Like you were like, that's how we met. You oh, came yeah. up to me and you're like, yo, put me in something. What do you got? Oh, I'm, and I'm like, what? what? Wait, I mean, 16? cameras are rolling. You got right. anything now? Yeah. Let's work with <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> We got literally. a few cameras right here. <laughs> we got some stories. We could, uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, the you literally, is, you literally came up to me as a 16 year old looking at me and I said, hey, I heard you got a movie in theaters this weekend. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's like, what else you got? What else you got? <laughs> exactly. And it was and literally rolls, that. And he rolls for me. <laughs> Let's go. But yeah, I mean, the truth is, I, I, again. And, and I said, and I said, how old are you? I know. And you said, how old do you need me to be? <laughs> and I'm like, Woo, Ooh, I was on it. I need to hire my 16 year old self. You said, how old, it. how old do you need me to be? Cause I can play between this and. and yeah, like, exactly. I could play 14 right now. I just got to, you know. I mean, clearly I could play, I could play 17. I just got to shave the beard. I mean, when you see one of my new, next projects, yeah, I look like there's, I go clean shave and I look like I'm literally 16 or 17 again. Yeah. 17 again, that's a movie. Um, but yeah, I mean, I clean, but th that's another thing though. It was like, I also, I take this so serious and that aside, aside from all of this, I hope that when people hear me talk in any interview, they know that this like, yeah, he wants to be there. He's he's happy to, for yeah. everything that he gets. But the truth is, is I'm so serious about it. For example, I was like having a 20 minute conversation with my mom saying, do I show up to the Bootleg Universe podcast like clean shaven? But I, I know I still need this for my Halloween costume, but 
I just want to be presentable. You know what I mean? Like everything is just like so thought out with me. Yeah, yeah. For example, having a beard. I'm like, hey, look, I want to have a beard for this role, but maybe a beard and short hair for the next. Or mom, what do you, th- your dad, or, you know, talking to my age. Like everything is just so like, I, I, I just, I feel like maybe I care a little too much about that, but when it goes around, again, it goes back to the very first thing you talked about. Everywhere I am, there's, I, I know that there's always a reason and there's sure. always some, something positive to take totally. from it. Not and, and there may be some naysayers that would look at what you said as, oh, he's, he's always acting, he's always on, he's always performing. But the way I see it and the way I've experienced you is you are a, yeah, sure, you're a performer, but, but you have complete control over your instrument. Right? Yeah. So you you take res- radical responsibility for how you show up in and, in, and, in the room, and when I make mistakes yeah. too, you know. I mean, I'll I'll own up to them, and I feel like that's a, it's a part of growth. Um, and you know, not to like like be sad or anything, but the past like year or two, you know, I've I've also found you know and learned a lot about myself of just like hey, like Ryan, you, yeah, like hey this wasn't right or you need to own up to the, and it just, it's just a part of being a real person and, and being a better person for sure. And especially with my little sister too and my brothers, but my, I mean, my youngest brother now just turned 21. So it's like, but still I want to be a good role model for them, but especially for my little sister, like I want her to, she doesn't have any sisters. So she only has what her old four older brothers show her, you know? So I feel like, and especially with her now, I mean, she's the lead in this movie. Like, her life can change dramatically. And it's a matter of how is she going to handle it? How is she going to be the person that, you know, is a a good role model for young, you know, women her age? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like things like that, like that maybe not too many people think about. Yeah. But it has to do with that family. and Well, I feel like a lot of people think about that. They're not proactively taking steps to I love that word. kind of- Love that word. Shout out to my friend, Jim. Manifest it in a way or have it unfold in a way that is in their highest excitement and everyone mm. else's highest excitement around them. Yeah, or or you no. hear it and people just, they, they I mean, it. and then last night I was like looking at and responding to Instagram comments of people saying like, you know, we, we definitely need this, you know, positivity and, you know, you're always so positive. We love looking at your posts and I just feel like it's a matter of some people see it, but it's a matter of can, you know, do you actually go and do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. The other the other thing, and the, this is kind of the last piece of this, of, of this this kind of topic. Yeah. Uh, and I think this this dev, this this greatly um, helps you. And maybe you you have seen the um I guess the, the 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 fruition of this or the ramifications of this or or maybe it's yet to come. I, I actually believe it's yet to come. Um, not actually, I, it is yet to come. Um, there's a tendency sometimes from performers to go, okay, this is a this is a Marvel movie. This is this is for Disney, or this is this is a big deal. Okay, I'm going to show up. I'm going to be pleasant. I'm going to be. I'm going to bring my A game. I'm I'm going to shake everyone's hand. Okay, I'm going to work right. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden you're on some some smaller indie movie may or may not have distribution. Uh, you know, you show up and it's like it it's not like this whole set. It's like a few <laughs> small people with a camera and an iPhone, right? Yeah. And then you're like, okay, I'm gonna big time these people, and and not bring my A game. Uh, be be difficult. <laughs> kind of get to get get to step into that difficult star oh, I role. Wish, you know what I mean? my mind right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you just have, I've never seen you do that. And you have, you, you literally went from the two biggest kind of pieces of content you could be in as a, as a, as a, as a, as a child star. And then you transitioned into like, yeah, like indie stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, to to rebuild your career, to reestablish yourself. And you did it with no ego, but you were something came to your mind and you were excited to share. And I would love for you to share. Uh, it's as simple as it like, I mean, there's so much, but two two things. One, the movie I mentioned earlier, the Samuel Project, yep. the, the writer of the film, we just wrote another movie together. Um, Steve. 
And that just shows the movie's show called Steve. What Steve Weinberg is the writer. Mm. He was he was the producer of the Samuel Project. Yeah. He reached out to me for that film on Christmas Eve Eve. I went to the set and we shot an indie movie in a few weeks and built such a good relationship um, that we ended up writing another movie together. But then on this movie that we just wrapped was literally, in a, we call it like, and it's like an Ochoa family film because my whole entire family is involved in it. But the entire crew, I mean, when you talk about independent filmmaking, the entire crew are, I mean, they're all ex extremely talented and super experienced, but none of them have done anything like on a Disney or Nickelodeon level yet. But the reason I bring it up is all of them, you know, they not only were so professional and you said about like, oh, big timing them on the set. When we did this movie, even though, like I get, went back to it, they didn't, they're didn't. they not working on, you know, DC or Marvel, Marvel films. We hung out from, you know, super early in the morning when we showed up to set till 3 to 4 a.m. that night going in. We had to be on set the next day. We became so close. When you talk about indie filmmaking, my parents... <laughs> It would get upset with me because we are, because I'm not big time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's not the person that I am. I'm like seriously best friends with almost every crew yeah. member it's, that we work on. It's very interesting because you're, you're able to walk this fine line where you're not big timing anyone. You also don't have that like- That's the point. Faux, but you also don't have that faux humility thing going on where some people have, right? They're, they're- you're you're just very real. You're very present. You're hyper you, right? It's like the 16 year old that comes up to like a person at an adults event and being like, "Yo, what you got? What you got right now? <laughs> yeah, what's shooting? You know what I mean? I got I got I got a hole in my schedule. I'm like, wow, this dude's <laughs> epic. It's a great energy, man. And look how many projects we've done. Well, not a lot, but well, we've one. done. No, we did. You called me for bodied. Okay, two. Body. Yeah. Guardians, and uh. Oh yeah, I guess that is. That's two, and then I then I ended up on one of your. You know. like, oh, oh yeah, that's right. We did mostly ghost leaves. Yeah, yeah. But that's still, that's I, I guess tangentially because my like my very very close friend uh, produces that franchise, and I I believe I mentioned him to you, or or you to him. That's that's kind of how that all because it was like right after we we'd met. I went, man, I met this like amazing dude. And he's like, oh, whoa, I'm, I'm getting into the Disney space. And I'm doing this like, you know, uh, he, he was friends with R.L. Stein, And then they, yeah. were, and then, yeah. Gosh, that's. And then, so again, I wasn't the reason you were cast. You were the reason you were cast, but yeah. I kind of, but I guess that, that goes to show how like kind of being a cool person and being kind of outgoing and, and social kind of creates creates opportunity in a, in yeah. a, in a nonlinear way. Cause you probably didn't even know that. Cause it's not like I ever called you and said, Oh, no. by the way, I mentioned you to my buddy, Steve Stabler. And y yeah. And he has this movie for you. He just reached out. Cause he said, okay, I need, I need Disney kids. Cause he'd worked with, um, uh, there are these twins, the Sprouse twins. Yeah. He'd worked with them and it went very, very well. And he was mm -hmm. like, okay, so who else is there from the roster? And I said, well, there's this guy, Ryan Ochoa and he's dope. And he's dope. <laughs> Love it. So. And and at the end, it, go, it also just goes back to just even ev like, and, I, and I'm not just saying this, it's like proof, like everything that I've like done lately, just working with people that you want to be around, you know? Yeah. And that's, I've just found myself and I've just, I get to work with and on the past like two, three years, everything that I've done, it's whether it's one person or the entire production, like this last one was Everybody that I just wanted to yep. work with or, you know, they, you know, called me or, you know what I mean? And it's uh, like. Yeah. And that's, and that's, I guess, the train that will lead you to the promised land. That, that about, you know, someone hits it, then they're like, hey, and then next thing you know, you're in Suicide Squad 6, <laughs> the return of the squad, right? 